Fears are growing that it won't be possible to stop the global spread of coronavirus. Our health experts have warned that the chances of containing it are diminishing as cases appear in more countries. Most infections are still in China, but there are a number of significant clusters elsewhere. The World Health Organization warned today that the window of opportunity to contain the international spread of the coronavirus is closing. South Korea has become the latest front in the outbreak. The country declared a health emergency as cases there quadrupled to more than 200 infections over the past two days. Today is the 27th of February 2020. As you can see here, there's a little bit more cars on the street now, and we're not in a lockdown anymore. It seems like the coronavirus situation in China is stabilizing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go up right here to check out my previous two videos. But meanwhile, it seems like the virus is spreading globally very fast these days. But today's video is about my story of creating a web app that will give you daily updates about the latest coronavirus information. There's a guy on Twitter, he did a poll asking people's opinions about the coronavirus. And 60% of the people are, seem pretty optimistic about the situation. And uh, nearly 30% they're not sure. Um, and only around 10% of the people are panicking or think the situation is quite serious. I mean, we are here living in a lockdown city. There's no cars on the street. There's no people on the street. We can't even get out of the house. I feel like we're living in two different worlds. Yeah, I think it's pretty crazy actually. I think maybe it just takes time for people to realize how serious this all is. But surely something can be done to raise people's awareness faster, right? Okay, so I gave you some thoughts and I think I can create a web app that's going to keep people updated with the latest coronavirus data. The web app is basically going to have two major functions. The first one is a map. When you open the map, you can actually see how many people are infected in each region across the whole world. But this map is not going to be something new. John Hopkins University has already created a real-time map that delivers the latest information. So my map is pretty much gonna be the same. But what's different is that I'm going to create an email service for you to sign up so you can get the latest information delivered to your inbox without having to check the map every single day manually to keep yourself updated. Let me give you a breakdown. This web app would have two major features. A map that visually shows you how many regions around the globe have infected cases and what are the numbers. And an email service. If you sign up, you would get daily or weekly updates on the latest coronavirus updates around your region and globally to keep you updated so you don't need to manually check the map every single day. Okay, I've never used a map on the front end, neither did I configure any email services. But I think I've heard about a lot of those APIs are available on the internet. So I don't think it's gonna be that hard, right? Anyways. Let's do some research and start coding, shall we? Okay, during my research, I started to try out different SDKs and try to figure out what are the best options for what I'm trying to do. And without me noticing, I started to write code because I'm typing, right? So that's just something naturally happens. And um, here's an update because it's already 11 o'clock in the night already. For the map, I'm using a tool called Open Layers, 
which is completely open source and free and it looks pretty good their documents are pretty decent and they have a lot of examples for me to reference to so I don't think anything would go wrong and actually there are a lot of projects built on top of it so I think it might be good and for email services I'm going to use AWS simple email service just like its name it's legitimately simple you just pass in the information that you want to send and pass in an uh, email list and boom off you go that sounds really decent with those two options I think I can do a quick and decent job let's get the code started Seven days have passed since I started creating this website. It took way longer than I expected and to be honest with you, I'm not even very happy with the result. But I'd like to share with you what happened and what went wrong. You see, there were many obstacles along the way. After I've decided which two and which SDK should I use to create this site, the very next thing is for me to find a legitimate data source. I did some googling but I couldn't find any legitimate source that shares the real-time information on the coronavirus situation. And meanwhile, China, which is where I'm at right now, actually is the hot zone of the coronavirus situation. So I switched my direction after a while. I found a bunch of Chinese websites are actually sharing the official data on the coronavirus situation in real time. For example, Ding Xiangyuan or Alibaba Health. That made me really happy. So I went ahead and checked out their websites and I found out the Ding Xiangyuan website is going to be pretty easy for me to work with because they actually deliver the data in a formatted string to the front end, which means I can simply grab the string and parse it and boom, I have a well-organized object that gives me the latest data on the coronavirus situation. But um, everything is in Chinese. All the city names, province names, state names, and country names, they're all in Chinese. I have to translate them. And that's what I did. That was tedious work, but it was necessary work. But only have the data is not gonna be enough. Because I need to display the data onto the map for people to see it. And that's why I need geolocation information for each city in the dataset that has infected cases. And that is why I went on to another hunt for a geolocation dataset. And that took me a while. You see, the problem is I was expecting to find some APIs that share the geolocation information of different places around the world. The very best thing that I could find was a CSV file that has the longitude and latitude information of most cities around the world in it. I had to go with the option because I couldn't find anything else. The whole process of getting the data ready, including finding a legitimate data source, crawling the data, and parsing the data, translating the data, as well as combining different data sources together to truly get what I really wanted, it took me quite a long time. But after that, it's time to use open layers to display the data onto the map and show it on the front end. Remember I said that the open layers document is pretty well made and also they have a lot of examples. That is still true. But when I started to use it, I found out there are a couple of setbacks. You see, their documents and examples are completely separated, which means they have whole pages of documents and whole pages of examples, and especially their examples. They're pretty well made standalone single page maps, which means for each example, they have many lines of code. So for me to try to understand certain functions, I have to go through a lot of code to try to find something that I think might work in my scenario. That was a struggle and took me quite a long time to figure shit out. Now, when it comes to email service, because I use AWS, they have a service called Simple Email Service that is really simple to use. I mean, I got something up and running within a couple of minutes and 
and it worked quite well. But the issue is, to get this thing to work for my site, I had to issue a ticket to ask them to move my application out of the sandbox. That took me two days to get the clearance. But it doesn't mean I was sitting here and doing nothing. Because I've never created an email service before, so I had to find a way to format my emails into a good looking template for anybody who receives them. So I created some email templates with the two that I found on GitHub. Every single day was a struggle because there were always some problems for me to solve. A lot of them actually took quite a long time for me to figure out how to deal with them. Well, I know programming is about problem solving, but for whatever reason, those problems were quite frustrating. And right when I was about to deploy the site, a bug appeared. According to the terminal, everything was running totally fine on the back end, but for whatever reason, the front end just doesn't talk to the back end. There's no communication going on between them. So I couldn't figure out why, and it took me more than half a day to figure that out, and turns out I was missing one word. One single word. That was really frustrating. After all the bugs were fixed, the site was ready for production. I pushed it to the cloud and waited for a day just to see how it works. And turns out um, the data that I have in the app is not that great. Even though I spent quite a lot of time checked all the name translation and their related geolocations, but it was just not right. Some cities are plotted somewhere else instead of the right place. So I knew I had to figure something out. And also during this time, I was actually thinking, maybe I should just quit it because I'm not trying to make any money off this site. I'm just trying to provide some services to help people, but this is legitimately taking a lot of time and effort. I'm coding into very late in the night and sometimes I'm thinking about a problem and I wake up quite early and try to solve it. I don't know if it's worth it or not, but for whatever reason I just didn't want to quit because, because if I quit, then all my previous effort is basically just gonna be gone. I went onto the John Hopkins University's map again. It was then I found out that all the issues that I had with my data was created by me because I was totally complicating the problem. They had a link at the bottom of the site linked to another GitHub repo with all the latest information updated every single day on the coronavirus situation globally. And for each city in the dataset that has infected cases, they have a valid geolocation information of that city. But for whatever reason, I completely overlooked the link and went on a totally different direction and wasted a lot of my time. So I went back and changed the data source. That was quite easy to change because this data set is well formatted and also really accurate. So I deleted a lot of redundant code and republished the site again. And this time, everything works totally fine. So that is how I created this coronavirus alerting app. It is at pandemicalert.xyz. I'll link it down below so you can check it out if you're interested. You see, I know it's not perfect. As a matter of fact, there are so many things can be improved on the site, but it works right now, so that's what matters. I'm just a guy trying to create something that I can help people. And also, I hope my videos on the coronavirus situation have helped you to be more aware of the situation so you can take necessary precautions for yourself and for your family as well. Because it seems like the virus 
is spreading globally quite fast these days. Let's hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. One more thing, my very first startup in my 20 startups in 20 months project is going to be launched very very soon. If you are interested, please subscribe to stay tuned because way more videos are coming. And also, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I'll see you very soon. Stay safe.